We're going to start out with uh, keeping with the gridiron, but really moving over towards Lincoln Riley and the coaching rumors that are coming out this week about him uh, going to LSU, LSU, uh, LSU uh, jumping on a plane to Baton Rouge, all that stuff. You know, these rumors go back even to the bye week uh, when Riley missed his press conference for a personal matter. Um, Rich, on a scale of zero to 100, what is your stock on Lincoln Riley to LSU rumors? <laughs> Well, not this one, man, it's going to fall flat on its face for me with a zero. And the reason why is when we look at Lincoln Riley and we look at the perception around the athletic program towards Lincoln Riley as a a head coach, it's Uh very favorable. And Oklahoma has consistently backed up that mindset and that view of him by contract extensions, by bonuses, different things that have been included in those contracts. What I'm looking at is an LSU program that won a national championship just a couple of years ago and is now, I don't want to say has hit rock bottom um, because they're not at the bottom of their conference. They're, they're not a great team. They're not even a good team this year. I get the firing of, of Ed Orgeron and looking for that next candidate and really wanting to hit a home run. But here's the thing, Matt, is why jump to an SEC program? that needs rebuilding Mm -hmm. instead of staying at the university of Oklahoma, which will become an sec program without the rebuilding process. No, that's a, that's a great point about, about Oklahoma jumping into the sec. And and you would think when you just look at the X's and O's, Jimmy's and Joe's, so to speak, as coaches like to say back in the day, um, at this point, if, if Oklahoma jumped into the sec, Next year in 2022, Oklahoma right now, right now, Oklahoma is better suited for SEC play than LSU is. I mean, that, that's I know people in Baton Rouge are going to go crazy over that statement, but it's the truth. Oklahoma has more tools, more assets, is in a better place as a program than LSU is right now for SEC play. So you got that going for you if you're Lincoln Riley. You're going into a rebuilding program. Have you watched LSU play this year? They're not good. They're not good. So, I mean, if you're Lincoln Riley, you're thinking, okay, I kind of I kind of I got a good thing going here in Norman. I'm competing for my seventh consecutive conference championship. Or I could go to LSU and rebuild. Well, then you think about how much patience are the fans in Baton Rouge going to have if you go to LSU and rebuild. Let's not forget, Ed Orgeron won a national championship 18 months ago. Oh, but, you know, he did this and did that. And okay, all right, fine. You know what? You fired Les Miles. He won a national championship. The last two national championship coaches from LSU have been fired by LSU. So what's the standard there? What, what's the expectation? What's the level of patience going to be? $84 million. That's a lot of money. But where are the chances you're going to live out that contract if they're firing national championship coaches left and right? I, I think this is a non-starter. I think there's a reason why the guys who get paid to cover Oklahoma football and Oklahoma sports, the guys who have the contacts and the connections and so forth, you're not seeing them write about this story. You're, you're not seeing Jason Kersey. You're not seeing Eddie Radosevich. You're not seeing Joey Helmer. You're not, you're not seeing those guys come out and say, yeah, well, my people are telling me this because there's no, there's no smoke here. Now, I wouldn't go 0% like you. I would, I would go uh, on a scale of 0 to 100. I think I would go to about 10 because it makes <laughs> sense. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you who the athletic director is at, at LSU, but it makes sense that you would make a phone call to Lincoln Riley's or Lincoln Riley's people and say, you know what? We have these assets financially. We can make this happen. And if you're Lincoln Riley, you benefit from that because you can go to Joe Castiglione and you can say, hey, you know what? Um, here's the situation. We have gotten this phone call from LSU and this is what they think our value is. Now, there's always the risk of that backfiring. Why, why is, why is um, Dana Holgerson making over a million dollars a year as the head coach for the Houston Cougars? It's because Houston said, here's what we'll offer you. Dana Holgerson went back to the West Virginia administration and said, here's the value that Houston's placed on me. What do you guys think? And West Virginia said, yeah, you should take that. <laughs> you should go to Houston. If they think you're worth that much, then you need to go to Houston. 
I don't see that happening at Oklahoma. I just, I just feel like when we went through this with Bob Stoops as a fan base, you're going to go through it at Lincoln Riley. Anytime a big name school, a big opportunity opens up, th- those are the names that are going to circle through. But here's the question. Here's what it all boils down to for me. Outside of a financial gain, outside of a financial gain, what's in this for Lincoln Riley to go to Baton Rouge? Nothing. Oklahoma is a at worst, no, excuse me, at best, let me say that, at best, this would be a parallel move for Lincoln Riley. At best, it's not a step up. He's not going to Alabama. There aren't very many jobs in the nation that are higher on the food chain than Oklahoma. So at best, this is a lateral move. At best, it's a cash grab. And when has Lincoln Riley ever come across as a guy who's interested in a cash grab? Never. What's Lincoln Riley interested in? He's interested in in developing quarterbacks. He's interested in winning football games. He's interested in being the head coach at the University of Oklahoma. He writes his own ticket here. He hasn't won a national championship, but Lincoln Riley does whatever he wants. He could go to Joe Castiglione within reason and say, Joe, here's what I want to do. And Joe Castiglione's going to be, hey, yeah, sure, you do that. Steve Sarkeesian can't say that. Steve Sarkeesian wanted to hire Mike Stoops as his defensive coordinator. And the people above him said, nope, you're not doing that. They would love to have Mike Stoops now after dropping a game to Kansas. Your grandma mm-hmm. could go out there and run for 100 yards against the Texas defense, Rich. The the point is, Lincoln Riley has it made at OU. And there's not enough money out there to give up that type of security. There's not. Now, you you attach Mike Gundy to this list. Instead of Lincoln Riley, you put Mike Gundy's name in there. Dude, he's gone. There there aren't there are, tell me the coaches in the Big 12 that have that type of job security that Lincoln Riley has. You want to do this job for a long time? You want to make a lot of money? You don't go to LSU. 